Hello, Anne, Renee, and April. Welcome. We are getting ready to go live here very shortly. Welcome to our Tuesday evening Facebook Live. Hello, Deb. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get going. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to my 7 o'clock Tuesday evening at 7 with the Wexford Stamper. My name is Barb Reed. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in cold and windy York, Pennsylvania. I hope everyone is doing well tonight. I'm very excited about our project tonight because it's a little has flowers and it reminds me a little bit of spring so I'm kind of excited about that so we will be using the um, fine art floral suite tonight and remember that all the dimensions and all the instructions and this video tutorial will be available on my blog soon after this Facebook live and my um, blog is www.thewexfordstamper.blogspot.com. There's where you can find all the information. And we will even have a PDF available on my website, I'm sorry, on my blog that you can download if you like um, something, a hard copy, which I do. And it will have all the directions, all the materials, and all that good stuff. So make sure you check out my blog. All right. Now, also, as we get started, if you haven't already, please make sure that you give me a like on my Wexford Stamper business page. Many of you already are on there, so you already have. And I also have a VIP page, which is a closed group. And that is for my stamping community, everybody that just likes to get together and um, talk about stamping and share projects. And if you'd like to be in my VIP group, you just message me and I will send you an invite. So make sure you do those things as well. I hope everyone is doing well. I see some more coming in. Check on in as you come in. Yes, I'm ready for spring, Renee. You said it, absolutely. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. As I said, um, our project tonight, we are going to be using the Fine Art F Floral Suite. And this is an amazing suite. And if you have your catalog, it's on page 32 and 33 in the new January to June mini. This thing is amazing. It's a gigantic um, suite. It has so many beautiful things. But I will show you some of the things that I'll be using tonight. I will be using the art gallery bundle. It is the stamp set with the coordinating dies. And I can't wait to show you how these flowers stamp. They're just so beautiful and they're two step stamp and it makes it look like you painted it on your card. So I'm excited to show you that. I'm also gonna be using the amazing paper. This paper is to die for. And hi Mary. And it is some of the most beautiful paper I have ever seen um, Stampin' Up! Uh, put out. And I'll show you as we start working, um, but you can see like brush strokes and things on the paper. It looks like a beautiful masterpiece that someone painted. So the paper is amazing as well. And then another thing I'm, we're gonna be using is the Fine Arts 3 8 inch ribbon. So, so pretty. Adds such a perfect touch to my um, project. Hi, Jean. Welcome. I know the paper, the paper. I love it too. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started right now. We'll take a look right here at the projects we have for this evening. Okay. We're going to make this box. Look at the paper. Ay, ay, ay. So pretty. And we're going to make a coordinating card. This would be a great gift to give someone for their birthday. I think it's a great way to show off the paper. Now, let me show you the paper here in real life, kind of real life. We're still on Facebook. But look, just look here. Here is some of the paper. This isn't the paper I used tonight, but this is in the pack. And I don't know if I can bring it close. You can see that it even looks like the um, flowers are painted. You can see the brush strokes and everything. It's just so beautiful. 
And here's one. Isn't that so, so pretty? I love it. And then I had one other one I wanted to share before I shared the one we're gonna be using. Look at that. You can really see, even up here, you can see the paint, the paintbrush strokes, but it's just such, such beautiful paper. Now, this is the one we're gonna be using for our box and card. Look at the colors. Oh my, my. I just, this one, my my eyes were drawn to immediately and I said this is the one I'm going to use for um, this box. All right, so I just wanted to show those off a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and make the box. All right, now I designed the box myself because I can't keep out of Bath and Body Works. I just love that place. I buy it online. I occasionally go in and buy some but they are now have their spring scents ready to go. I know April, the flowers are so gorgeous. So I got me a few of these antibacterial hand sprays. Now these are a little different. They have the little hand sanitizer gels, which are very popular too, but this is a new product that it's been around for a couple of years, I guess, but it's an antibacterial spray. So you spray it on your hands instead of, um, putting the goop on your hands with the gel. So this is what I, I took this and I designed a box that it would fit perfectly and here it is. So it fits in there just right. And let's go ahead and get started on those dimensions. Now here I'll show you, this is a copy of the PDF that you can get on my web, on my, um, on my blog, oh boy, on my blog, it has all the information you need. I even put a little picture of the template there so you can have a little bit of help cutting it out because that can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the pool party base, okay? And this is cut at eight and seven eighths by seven. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my simply scored board and on the long side which is the eight and seven eighths side i'm going to score at one and five eighths six and three quarters eight and three eighths okay that's for the that's for the long side now let's turn it on the short side the seven inch side and on the seven inch side, we're gonna score at one and five eighths, three and a quarter, four and seven eighths, six and a half. All right, that is it for the box. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my bone folder and I'm going to Go across all my score lines. Make sure they're nicely creased. Hey, Jenny, have you noticed my new um, surface here? I think it really helps show things off. No, there's no kit for this one, Kendra, but all the directions will be on my blog. That's a great question. No, nope. those are usually for our classes. All right, so there I have um, went ahead and I creased all my score lines. Now I'm gonna grab my template so you can see where we're going with this. Okay, this is what we wanna come up with, okay, when we finish our cutting. All right, so you're gonna notice this thinner um, section up here with the thinner rectangles. We're gonna put that towards the top and the fatter rectangles, not fatter, but wider rectangles at the bottom. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is this tiny little rectangle here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna cut that one right off. Okay, now these are going to be the bottom of my box. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the vertical score line to the first horizontal score line. Thank you, Renee. I think it really helps. All it is, don't tell anybody, but it's just contact paper on my old white Ikea desk. How about that, huh? I love how it looks. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the corners off here. 
just so we don't have too many pieces and flaps pushing together in the corners. That helps the flaps come together a little bit better. All right, so that's the bottom and all those are gonna come together. Now let's look at the top up here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this over and just like we had up here, we're gonna go ahead and cut off this thin rectangle at the top as well. Okay, so we did it at the bottom, the top. Now we're going to um, create the two flaps that flap inside and then the lid that flaps over. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it over to the other side and just like we did before, we're gonna cut up all the score lines. All right. Now what you're gonna notice is this one here is going to be our lid. These two here are gonna be the flaps and then this one we're gonna get rid of. Okay, so let's go ahead. This one is gonna be the flap that we keep. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to cut a little bit off the top corners there. Okay, this one is one of the flaps that's gonna flap into the box. So I'm gonna cut a little of it off and then I am going to wedge the corners like that. All right, then this is our final flap over here. Oh wait, let me cut a little bit lower, about a half an inch down and then wedge the corners. All right. Now this piece here, we're gonna get rid of. All right, so I'm gonna fold these flaps over and I'm gonna cut this piece off right here. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at how they compare. All right, so that's how you get your template. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take our template and get ready to create our box. All right, first thing we're gonna need is some of our designer series paper, because I like to put the designer series paper on my box before I construct it, because then I can really, really push down on the paper and get a nice firm adhesive. All right, so I'm taking a look at my paper here these are cut at one and a half by five, and you need four of those, one for each side of the box. All right, so I'm gonna grab my glue, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little glue on there, and then it's gonna fit just inside the lines or the score lines of the side panel. Okay. Going to do that three more times and just the paper is just so so beautiful that it really makes such a statement you don't need much more in your box in your for the to make the box i mean okay and this piece here and then we have one more at the end. Remember, these are one and a half by five. All right, there we go. And then we have a tiny little square that is one and a half by one and a half, and that is going to be our lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. So now, since it's still flat, and not glued together. You can really push down, make sure you've got all your pieces in a great spot. Okay, next, we're ready to go ahead and put our box together. Before we do that, if you notice on my box, there's a little thumb hole there. I always like to make the little thumb hole to make it easier to open the box. So I have my little one half inch circle punch and I'm going to take it and just take a little nip 
out of the front of the box here where there's no flap. And that's gonna be the spot where we can get in there with our thumb and open it nicely. All right, let's put our box together. I'm gonna to use some tearing tape here. The blue is pool party. Good question, April. Mm-hmm. The pack of paper, Kendra, is from the fine arts floral, fine art floral. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of the tear and tape right there along the side of my box, right along that nice, thin, long rectangle that we created. I'm gonna take off my tear and tape. I'm gonna close the box over, and then I'm just gonna close right there. Okay, and then you have your box together. Now what we need to do is just close up the bottom. And what I like to do there is I put a little bit of glue on each of the flaps. So let me go ahead and get my glue. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's do the side ones first. Just a little glue to hold those down. And then we always close the front flap down last, just so you have that nice fold right there in the front. All right, so there we have it. Let's close the top. Oop, let's get our antibacterial hand spray in sun-washed citrus. That's a very yummy spring smell. And there you have it. There is your box. How easy is that? Let's go ahead and get our ribbon. This is something I talked about at the beginning. This is part of the suite as well. Such a pretty, pretty color. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a nice size piece and we're gonna tie that around the top. And this is a little tricky trying to do it on a table in front of the camera, but hey, I'm gonna do my best, right? The, the um, ribbon is nice and soft. It's really, really easy to make your bow. And I made this piece a little too long, but rather a little too long than a little too short, right? Okay, there's that. And that. All right, there is our bow on top, ready to roll. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I stamped the beautiful flowers for the um, embellishment on the front. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some basic white paper. This is a photopolymer stamp, so it makes it very, very easy to do two-step stamping, because you can see right through it. All right, now, because it's a photopolymer stamp, I like to use my pierce mat because it makes it, um, gives it a little bit of cushion so that the um, image comes out nice and clearly. All right, let's start with the large flower first. There's two parts to the large flower, okay? You have this one, which is the background portion, and then this one is some of the details. So what I do is I start with the one that has the background, and I'm going to grab my Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to, let's see, I wanna make sure I'm in the picture here. I'm gonna grab some of the ink there. Now, before I stamp on there, since this is a background image, I'm gonna stamp off onto my scrap paper, and then I'm going to stamp on to my paper. Okay, so it's a little lighter than it might be if it was all one if it was on with full strength. Then I'm gonna grab the second one, which is the detail stamp, and I'm gonna stamp that full strength right on to my, if I can get my head over there so I can see where I'm going here. There we go. And there you go. See how pretty that is? How it makes it look so um, three-dimensional there? 
Isn't that beautiful? Love it. It matches perfectly with the um, beautiful paper. Makes it look like it has the beautiful paintbrush strokes. All right, let's try again. We're gonna use this one for the smaller. Okay, again, we're gonna have this background stamp right here. Gonna use some uh, Calypso Coral for this one. Again, I'm gonna stamp off onto my scrap paper, then stamp onto my basic white paper. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the detail part of the flower. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp and go full strength right into the center of that. And it gives it a little bit of a three-dimensional look. How pretty is that? So, so pretty. All right, last one is going to be the, whis not the Whisper White, the Pool Party Flowers. And if you look here on my box, they're the ones that are kind of in the back of the, um, flower arrangement on the front. All right, so I'm gonna grab my pool party ink. And as I did before, we're gonna use this first as a background stamp. Okay, so I'm stamping on my pool party, stamping on my mat, and then stamping on my paper. Okay, then I'm going to use the same detail flower um, stamp that I used for the Calypso Coral stamp, but we're gonna do it with the pool party. And there's three little blossoms here, so I'm gonna do it three times. And then we'll have all our flowers ready for our gorgeous box. Look at that. Isn't that amazing how that two steps does such a beautiful job showing off those flowers. Look at those. I like look at that sometimes and I say, oh my goodness, how in the world did I stamp that? It looks so beautiful. All right, now to make this project, you really need two of each of these because we're gonna need them for the um, box. Now what you do is you will cut them out using your die cut machine with their coordinating stamps. And here, I'll show you what we have when we cut them out. Here is our cute little blue flower. Now we have two of each because we're going to need them for our card as well. Okay, we've got our pretty yellow. And then here is our Calypso Coral. All right, so there are the flowers. I cut two, so we would have them for both things that we need. So let's go ahead, and I'm gonna take these two here, I'm sorry, these three, and let's go ahead and build our, there we go. We're gonna build our little embellishment on the front. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pool party flower, You don't have to, um, Kendra. You can use a different color. There's a lot of different things you can do with a two-step stamping. But for these, I felt like stamping off and then stamping on with the color again gives it a little bit of dimension, okay? But you can also stamp in two different colors like that are close together in, in um, color. Like you maybe for this large flower, you could use... Uh, the Daffodil Delight and the Mango Melody and do one layer in each of the colors. So two-step stamping is very fun because you can kind of do whatever you want. But um, I chose to do the stamp off with this. You have to experiment and see what you like, Kendra. All right, and then finally, I'm going to put this cute little Calypso coral flower right there. So there is my little flower arrangement for the front. And then you'll, if you notice, I'll bring in the, the um, dies here real quickly. They have this cute little scalloped rectangle, like a scalloped banner. And I use that for both the card and the box. And for this one, I stamped the best wishes. And best wishes is from the set. I stamped it using uh, memento ink 
and I also cut off a little bit of the sides because it's a little too long for my box. So I just took my snips and cut off both ends. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab some dimensionals. And I think what I'll do for this, this is a real thin little piece here that we need. I'm going to use this side piece here for on the dimensionals. You ever try that? Let me see if I cut it. Nope, I didn't cut it off yet. There we go. If you have, you can either use mini dimensionals or you can use like the side piece from here and then lay that right on there. And then we can put that right on the front of our box. Okay, so there we have two of the cute boxes there. Really simple to put together. All right, now let's go ahead and make the card. Now this is really simple. All right, I'm gonna grab the card that's finished here. And I just brought in and used the same colors and then there are our three little flowers that we stamped from before. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the, here we go. We're gonna start with a pool party card base. I'm gonna just fold that over. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead, and what's so cool about this paper, this is the paper that I'm gonna put on the front just because I love it. I think it's a great neutral piece, but it still has a little element of the painting on it, and it's actually the back of the paper that we're using um, for the box and for the coordinating card. So it's a hard, hard thing sometimes to watch yourself put Tombow on this gorgeous paper. But you can always buy another pack, so I don't worry about that. This paper is gorgeous. Alrighty, so we have our one little piece. This is just four by five and a quarter, like we have usually put for our card fronts. Then I'm going to grab a strip that is one and a half inches wide, five and a quarter inches long, and I'm gonna put that right here to the left side on my card. It's going to go right there. So you guys can see how easy this is coming together. Okay, let's bring my sample over here. Okay, so we're going to grab the second set that we made here of all of our... Okay, so first I'm going to put the pool party little flowers. I'm going to put those with Tombow. They're kind of the first layer. I'm just going to kind of lay them right here in the front. And this is kind of up to you, however you want to um, arrange your flowers on here. Then I'm going to take my beautiful Daffodil Delight flower, turn that over, and get some dimensionals. And that's going to go on top and kind of to the right here. I like it right there. Okay, last of all, our little Calypso Coral. We're gonna put that one right here. Isn't that so pretty? It picks up all the important colors from the paper and just looks so beautiful. All right, the last thing we need for the front is the happy birthday. And again, I use that scallop rectangle that comes with the die set. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this side a little longer and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little Tombow on the back and I'm gonna slide that in and under my little Calypso coral flower. All right. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put a plain white, not plain, basic white 
piece of cardstock inside. And I'm just gonna kind of, I don't know if you have a habit of doing this, but I don't always like to put my inside sentiment because I'm not ever sure who I'm gonna send it to. So I like to keep that empty so we can have more options when the time comes. All right, the last thing for the front we need are the gorgeous gems. And I'm trying to find where I put my gems. Sometimes challenging to have everything you need at your fingertips here, but I know they're here. There they are. These I love. I've used these for so many of my projects. They are called the Opal Rounds, and I love to put them on this card. Remember, we always talk about adding your embellishments in groups of three. Thank you, Mary. I've had lots of practice. <laughs> I've practiced on third graders, so... That is a challenge, so I've had lots of good practice. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my pick tool and put some of these beautiful little opal rounds on my card. I love this card, so, so pretty. And I love the opal rounds because they're neutral enough that they can really go with any color card. So I think that looks fabulous. All right, last little trick. You'll notice that I put a piece of designer series paper on the flap of my envelope. So easy. Let me show you how you do that. You're just gonna cut a piece of designer series paper at five and three quarters by two and a half. All right, you're gonna close your flap on your envelope and you're gonna go ahead and put a nice even layer of Tombow all over the outside of that flap. Okay, and then, yes, Bath and Body Works. Raise your hand if you love that place. I have both hands up, you just can't see them. <laughs> then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adhere it right down onto the flap. And then I'm gonna flap it up and you're gonna notice you're gonna have a little bit of the designer series paper that you're gonna to need to cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut around right at the edge of the envelope. And your recipient will be so impressed that you were so thoughtful to buy envelopes that match your card. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? What a nice touch on your card. You can even go crazy and maybe even stamp a little flower in the, in the corner at the bottom. So there's just lots of things you can do with that. So that is my project for this evening. We have our card here and we have our lovely gift box. So please, if you decide to make it, Please post your creations on my VIP page. I'd love to see what you come up with. You could try this with any of the papers in the pack, but I just thought this was a perfect paper for a nice spring gift. Remember that you can get the PDF on my blog if you'd like to have a hard copy, and by the end of the evening, the video tutorial will be on there as well. So that is my project for this evening. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. If you have any requests on projects you'd like me to do, please don't hesitate to message me. I love a challenge. And next week, I will be making some beautiful cards with our vellum cardstock. So don't, don't forget to tune in next Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock and see what I've come up with for that. So take care. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye now.